changes the test chips. That's the first devlog. What are they doing? This one is short. American Destroyer Frank Friday. What was Frank Friday? Oh, that was the uh, Johnston test chip. Maximum speed increase. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen them change the base speed of a ship. I don't remember the last time I've seen them actually adjust the base speed of a ship. That's pretty interesting. Um, once again, this doesn't, like, the, <laughs> Johnston still doesn't make that much sense. Uh, compared to, like, the historical Johnston. Once again, instead, saturation. Slightly more saturation than a normal American destroyer. That would have been more interesting. Like, I guess, like, whatever. But they're, they're going with their with their weird thing, so whatever. Here, nine. Uh, Commissar. Change parameters of AP shells. Guaranteed ricochet angles increased 60 to 65. The angle at the check for ricochets is made increased 45 to 50. Wow. Okay, so standard Soviet pen on these. That's Petro pen. Petro pen angles. That's a huge buff. That's a huge buff. Um, the restoration of hit points after receiving damage to Citadel increased 33 to 50. So, yeah, this is a big buff. They're buffing the survivability. Uh, you can heal. You can heal more damage. And this is actually a lot of damage you can heal. 50%. That's surprising. Because uh, normally uh, ships heal about 60% of the damage they take. But if you get Citadel, the battleships, for example, heal 10% of Citadel damage. And cruisers normally heal 33% of the Citadel damage. This one gets buffed to 50. This is almost Royal Navy light cruiser-esque um, Citadel healing. This is, like, this is a big buff. You can heal a lot of this. So, survivability, uh, more forgiving, and uh, AP much more usable now. AP much more usable. Interesting. Yeah, it overmatches 16 millimeters with these. Also, it's got really good range. Hmm, we'll see what they make. Commissar is, of course, a weird ship. It's a hybrid. It's a Soviet hybrid ship. It can launch planes as well. Um, okay. Weird. It looks strong though. I'm surprised they're making all these changes to this, but they still haven't touched, uh, or they haven't aren't changing the Sevastopol more. Because if there's a ship that really could use the help, it's Sevastopol. That thing is still suffering. And then we have the other blog. New clan battle season. Oh boy. New clan battle season. Trade in and more. Close this 13.4. Ahoy, captains. We can't believe it's already time to share some information about update 13.4. They just grew up so fast, don't they? Bro, what is with these devlogs lately? The, the zoomers writing them? <laughs> they just grow up so fast. Truly. Plan battle season 25. Polar bear. I hope you haven't stored away your winter coats yet. Because Season 25 of Clan Battles will be called Polar Bear. Come warm up by the fire while you check out this season's format. <sighs> I need more coffee. This, I, I shouldn't always start my streams with the devlog on. I, think I should do them later when I've woken up. Because, like... <laughs> I'm, just fucking, I'm just like, oh my god. Like... <laughs> <laughs> It's another AI written devlog? Oh no. Seven versus seven. Here, ten ships. No submarines or aircraft carriers. Maximum of two battleships. Okay. To gear up for the occasion, we have added an achievement for the teams that end the season in the top league, as well as an achievement for the winner. Polar Bear and Hurricane Polar Bear. <laughs> okay. Now, this season is going to be a bit shorter compared to the recent ones, lasting from May 20th until June 10th, with battles beginning on May 22nd. We have heard some feedback that players want clan battles to feel a bit more fresh and exciting, and we're definitely on board with that. As a result, we wanted to test out a feature that could help positively shake up the clan battles. Support consumables. No, no, I just just coffee I'm drinking. 
<laughs> wait, wait, are they serious? Well, okay. For those that have played the Pinata Hunt battle type, this idea will be somewhat familiar. There will be a selection of support consumables available, no unlocking required, that are designed to make interactions between players more interesting and unique. The only consumable not present from Pinata Hunt will be the Iron Curtain consumable. That's the one that made you immune to damage. Feel free to check out the list of consumables below. Support consumables. Okay, so... Repairs 1% HP per second, applies damage control, affects all allied. Okay. Action time 10 seconds. This, so this can be kind of like a get out of jail if someone is on, someone gets an unlucky perma fire or someone is under heavy focus and they're trying to keep him alive. This might be one, but oh, smoke on demand. Dispatches air group equipped with smoke curtain generator to the indicated area. The air group generates a smoke screen that reduces the risk of being detected by the enemy. Aircraft do not spot enemy ships. Number of users, one. Cooldown, three minutes. Wait, what's the point of the cooldown if you only have one? Oh, it probably starts with the cooldown, so you can't use it in the first three minutes. Uh, action time, 15 seconds. Smoke duration, 90 seconds. Preparation time, 60 seconds. Preparation time, 60 Wait, does it mean it takes 60 seconds for it to deploy? I'm, I'm confused. Does this mean 60 seconds to deploy it? Or... Huh. Maybe you have two with Super then? No, normally you... I don't think that's how it works. Prep time is normally before first use. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, so if it's 60 seconds prep time before you can use it, why is there even a cooldown on it if it only has one use? Is this just because they were lazy and they just copied it from Pinata? Probably. Normally prep time is before you can use it, like the start of the match. Probably just lazy. I'm thinking just lazy. Oh, comes Razor. I'm thinking lazy. Forced stalemate. Prevents your team from losing points. Prevents the opposing team from earning points. Number of uses, two. Cooldown, 120 seconds. Action time, 30 seconds. Man, this thing is f kind of fucking nuts, actually. Because if you can use this... You can, you can hold on to this towards the end of the match. And you can prevent them from getting... Like, this will fuck up all point calculations. This will fuck up all point calculations. Because, like, if you're trying, are, do we win on one cap right now? And they're like, yeah. And then someone presses this button in the last 30 seconds, and then suddenly you, you lose, despite having a cap advantage, because the other just gained 30 seconds of points. What? You can, yeah, you can use it for trading as well. Because if you can't lose points, that means, well, if you're trading ships, you're not losing points on the trade. Which means... If you go in for some heavy one for ones and you time the cool the consumable correctly, uh, you're gonna be up a shit ton of points. Keep in mind that season twenty five counts towards cot entry. I refuse to believe they're that damn but no way. I refuse to believe. No, I don't believe that. That's too dumb. No, even I. That's that's too dumb. It doesn't? Yeah, that looks... I don't, I don't think it would. That would be too stupid. That would be too stupid. You can't have a game mode with completely different rules count towards a tournament. That doesn't make any sense. That's That would be too stupid. But this thing is like dog shit in Pinata. But this thing is can potentially be super clutch in Clan Battles. Like, you see the Kremlin's about to ram each other, which happens honestly quite a bit, the Kremlin one-for-one one rams, and then you fucking press this, and it's you just got, get a shit ton of points. Huh. Interesting. Call patrol bombers. Spush just bombers to the indicate the area, the bombers patrol the area and automatically drop HE bombs on enemy ships. No one is gonna fucking use this. 
No one is going to use this because I don't think they spot. They don't spot, so... Oh, it's, it spots. Really? Huh. So it gave you spotting plans. They do spot. Oh, fuck. How long do they... Action time, two minutes. They patrol for two minutes. So if you put this on... If, if you defend the cap, the DD goes in, you radar to force him back. Like he baits out the radar, and then he then he kites back. Uh, that's normally how they do it. And then he goes in for a cap, but then you send in your fucking... <laughs> you, you send in your fucking patrol bomber. So he has to fucking wait two, two minutes for that fucking thing to despawn. Or get someone there to help him shoot that down, or whatever. Or he tanks up. And by that time, radar is going to be up again. What? Thank you, Mr. Exum, for 49. I hope someone, like, fucking streams this, because I want to watch this. This is going to be more of a fiesta than the pinata mode, I think. This is going to be more of a fiesta than the pinata mode. Holy shit. Drop... <laughs> Drop minefield. Area of minefield to the indicated area. Mines deal significant damage and can cause flooding. The aircraft... Oh, this, this is specifically that doesn't, it doesn't spot... Okay, number of uses two cooldown, three hundred action time, five seconds, forty six mindful duration, two hundred seconds mindful prep. <laughs> I don't think people will use this much. I don't think people will use this one much. I feel like it's too easy to play around it in pop. It will be too easy to just delay your push or whatever. I don't know though, it, it's, it will be a very strong delaying tool. Depends on the map, I guess, but maps it's RNG, you can't choose maps. I could see it in some situations if the enemy is pushing and you need time to rotate to deal with it. Slapping down a fucking 200 second minefield to delay them because they can't push through it because of the fucking flood and damage, uh, and then you have time to rotate. Hmm. Your team spams ASW and they're they're gone. Did the ASW work against them? Because I, I tried it and it was very iffy. It works in Pinata. Okay, well then at least you can ASW spam it to death. Incre joint fleet maneuvers. Increases speed of allied ships by 20. Increases acceleration speed by 30%. Decreases turning areas by 30%. Action time, one minute. I think there's a lot of really interesting pushes you can make with this. I feel like there's a lot of really interesting... You can get into positions faster than people expect you to get into positions with this. I wonder how mandatory this will become on uh, Marsals and Clabers and shit. Because if there's maps with islands, that's going to be fucking nuts. Because you're going to be able to get there much faster. Like on some maps where you need to get a DM into some position. It's very hard to get into the position. But if you get there, it's very strong. Uh, using this to get the DM there super quick. Might be really fucking strong. Hmm. And also, if you're going to go for a YOLO. This thing is really nuts. Speed a DM into a nasty position? Yeah, exactly. Yo, this is gonna be such a crackpot of the season. Holy shit. <laughs> mm. Wow, okay, this thing is really nuts as well, though. Coordinated fire. Choose an enemy receives 30% more damage from all sources. Fuck, this is, this is not good in Pinata. But in coordinated play... 30% extra damage. That's a lot of fucking damage. That's a lot of fucking damage. Gang is going to love that one being used against him. <laughs> Bro, that's a lot of damage. And I mean, you can coordinate. 
Oh, you're about to land some torpedoes? Pop this shit on the guy you're about to land torpedoes on. Or someone is pushing in, and you, you're trading, you pop this shit on him, and you're guaranteed winning that trade unless you're dog. Um, this has, like, pretty huge potential. DMs are gonna become very squishy, though. If you're thinking, what, 55k HP DM, 30% extra damage now it's a 40k hp dm that's pretty brutal also in the fact that it lasts 30 seconds that's a long time that's a long time it can make and go god forbid if you get misposition in the dd you get spotted in a bad position in a DD and someone pops this shit on you. Interesting. What's the best consumable? Tough one. I think you could choose two per team, wasn't it? Mm. Wait, how many is it per team? Let me see. Activating the cool smoke curtain, cold bomb, drop bomb, according to consumable, opens the tactic map. There you can choose the area to deploy the select. According to fire, you'll need to select an enemy ship instead of an area. In order to keep team balance with the support consumables active, there will be restrictions on which classes can take certain consumables. Okay, let's see. So, destroyers can take bombers, minefield, speed, coordinated fire. Cruisers can take the heal, the points, the minefield, the damage boost battleships can take kind of everything hmm. interesting in addition to the above restriction divisions will be limited to two of each consumable per division yeah exactly two per division two per division so you can pick two hmm I think the smoke is probably not going to get used much. Because it's only ultimately, it's, it's a 1 minute 30 second. It's one smoke. They only give you one. And it only lasts 90 seconds. That's not fucking worth it, considering how strong the other ones are. So this one is probably not going to be used at all. The other ones all have potential uses. The heal? I don't know. It's, it's a team-wide... It's a team-wide heal, which can't be underestimated. If you've been trading, the entire team has been trading, and you pop this, and everyone gets 10% and then 10%, that's a lot of health. Especially if you're running uh, heavy health ships, like you're running Moskvas and Stalins and Napolis, and you know the usual fucking super tanky cruiser ship. Um, this is a lot of health you're giving your team back. And if you type it at a good time, as well, use it at a good time, you're also, you don't need to use DCP which saves DCP pressure, it's, there's a lot of things here. So this one, this one is potentially quite strong, depending on the team. This one is potentially also, this is one of those you can hold on towards the late game, because it makes the game very unpredictable. It's going to be very hard to like, uh, plan ahead. Because if one team suddenly pops this, and then like in the last 30 seconds, they get some trades or something, they YOLO in for trades. One for one, suddenly the points can switch completely because they're not losing points. There's a lot of like having this as an ace in a sleeve is really strong. The fact that this spots, we'll see how strong it is. It seems pretty strong though, getting plane spotting. Thank you, Velux. But on the other hand, it's only two, but still. Minefield is just anti push. This one can also, Joint Fleet can, is probably always going to be useful. I failed to see a situation where Joint Fleet wouldn't be useful because it's first of all it's one minute so you can use it early game to get your team into better positions in safer getting them into better positions in fact if one team used this might become meta that one team uses this and the other team has to start using it as well because otherwise they lose they fall behind on the positions because the other team gets there so much faster than they, they do so this might literally become a like a meta mandatory thing we use it because the other team is using it basically Coordinated fire is also potentially huge. Harder to use, but giga damage when used.
But yeah, you gotta remember this is the entire team as well. This can be really good for saving someone as well. Like, oh fuck, I'm almost dead. So if someone pops this, you get out of the you get out of there despite not supposedly not being able to get out of there. Because the the benefit of this and this is that it's team wide. Team wide. No range requirements, no vision requirements, no nothing. You just press a button and everyone gets it. Interesting. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Trade in. You have some ships that you don't use anymore. Are there sh some ships that you want but can't afford right now? Well, never fear because trading feature is here once again. This is a scam, by the way. This is always a scam. Because uh, you tend to get special tab, yada yada. Discount. A list of ships that players can receive. Oh, for sure, man. Really? Monopoly? Oh, you can trade in everything for this. Holy shit. You can trade in everything for them. No, keep in mind that usually... Uh, usually the, the exchange rate is shit. And if you have... If you get rid of one of these premiums, you better believe the next time you open any container or whatever and you get a ship, you're gonna get one of these. You're gonna get one of these, guaranteed. Depends on the trade-off, though. It depends on how good the trade-off is. Potentially, potentially, you could trade in a bunch of coal ships. Like, let's say you got one million coal, like on EU I have. On EU I have something like how much coal? 1.2 million. And there's probably people that have a lot more. Yeah, potentially, you could buy a bunch of shitty coal ships, trade them in, and get one of the ships that you want. Potentially. And then you could rebuy the coal ships and stuff like that. Like, there is... You can only trade one for one, really. Oh, never mind. Rare ships that are difficult to possible to change, I exchange for a larger discount. Uh, if the ship you exchange offers discount greater than the value of the ship you want to purchase, then you will get that ship without any additional payment. The difference in value is not compensated. Okay, it's one ship for one. Okay. Never mind then. Never mind. It's probably going to be scam. Viscount of Victory. St. Vincent. Hmm... I mean, it, this 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 just makes it look even more like a World War One ship, which it it, it kind of is, but it's just stupid that the strongest tier ten BB in the game is literally World War One ships. <laughs> the turrets look really good. Though. I like the superstructure. I'm not sure about this though. Inspired by HMS Victor. Mm. Best kind of victory. Not anymore the strongest. I mean, for randoms. I mean, I guess with the new radar BB and shit, things have gotten even worse in that part. What is this? Removing Commonwealth tokens and replacing them with credits. Commonwealth premium. 2.8% chance to get... Wow, okay. Yikes. I don't think it'll be a scam. It lets me trade in a ship I'll never sell for one that I might actually play. Fair in one sense, but uh, you got to remember that you, you, you're you always going to be trading at a loss. They wouldn't offer this unless you were trading at a loss. So you're going to be trading at a heavy loss, and the next time you open a container, you're going to get one of these that you traded in, almost guaranteed. Um, basically... You should never sell old premiums and you should never get rid of old premiums. You should always keep them. Not because they're good or because you're going to play them, but just to make sure you can't get them in any containers or, or boxes or rewards or whatever. It, it's literally... The reason you keep old shitty premiums is not because you're going to play them, but because to make sure you can't get them as a second drop. 